Now, in this segment, I did want to talk about solvents. Now, there's a lot of information and misinformation out there about solvents. So, hopefully, by the end of this segment, we'll have a little bit more clarity on that. Now, the first thing that needs to be said about solvents is that really none of these are good for you. They're all really neurotoxins, they're all narcotics, and they are, bottom line, just not that healthy to work with. That being said, there are certainly healthier alternatives than others, and we'll take a look at some of those uh, a, a bit uh, later. Now, what I'd like to do first is take a general overview of some of the more common ones that are used out there, and then we'll go into more specific detail on a few of these. So, let's take a look at what we have right here. We have a couple odorless mineral spirits. We have a Gamsol and a Terpenoid. We have a regular paint thinner right here. We have a 100% pure spirits of gum turpentine. We have a Terpenoid Natural. And we have a citrus peel product right here. So, these three on this side right here are petroleum distillates, meaning they're made out of petroleum products. This is a 100% resin natural product right here, the turpentine. The turpenoid natural is a sort of combination product. And the citrus peel delimonene product is our green product. Now, as far as uses for some of these, really all of these can be used for cleanup. Some people like the turpenoid natural in particular for brushes anyways, because it has some additional conditioners in it. But on the other side of the coin, some people like the, the mineral spirits just because they're a little less expensive. Now, as far as diluting paint, any of these can be really used for diluting paint, except really a terpenoid natural, which again is just good for cleaning. As far as mediums goes, really any of these can be used as a medium, except the terpenoid natural. And finally, dissolving Damar varnish or dissolving resins, really only the 100% gum turpentine is good for that. Now, as far as the toxicity of some of these products, really, that is certainly true. Now, one distinction, actually a couple distinctions I wanted to make that may help you steer in, help you steer towards healthier products. One is the PEL rating and the other is the evaporation rate. First, the PEL, which is the permissible exposure level or limit. That really is an OSHA standard dictating how much solvent can be in the air without causing adverse health effects. Now, it's measured in parts per million. And for example, the gum turpentine has 100 parts per million and the Gamsol has 300 parts per million. Now, it's a little counterintuitive because you'd think more and more a higher PEL rating would be better for you, and it's just the opposite. A higher PEL rating is actually better because you can stand, you, you can stand to have more exposure to that particular product right there. So again, you want to steer towards a higher PEL rating if possible. Now, as far as the evaporation rate, you'd want to steer towards a lower evaporation rate. For example, again, the turpentine and the citrus peel product here have very high evaporation rates, meaning it gets into the air really fast. And the minute you smell it, it's already in your bloodstream. So you've got to be really careful of that. And in comparison to the odorless mineral spirits, which really evaporate much, much slower. So you really want a higher PEL rating and a slower evaporation rate if possible. Now, Again, these are meant as guides. Of course, we don't have the equipment to measure parts per million in our studio, so we really want to steer towards, steer, use these as guides. Now, if you want more information, please request the Manufacturer Safety Data Sheet, the MD Manufacturer Safety DS, MSDS Sheet. So all of them should have that, and all should be able to provide that for you. Now, as far as specific products right here, uh, I want to talk about a couple of them. The first is turpentine. Now, turpentine has is really a mainstream product in oil painting, but it's actually one of the worst. It is very toxic at actually very low levels. It is a sensitizer, first of all, meaning it can cause allergic reactions. It can cause throat, nose, and eye irritation. And it also listed under narcosis, which really means headaches, dizzy, nausea, those sort of issues. So you got to be real careful working with this one. Certainly ventilation helps, but 
again, you have to be aware. It can, if you open your window, it can blow into you just as easily as it can blow out. So just wanted you to have that awareness for this particular product right here. And actually, these two, I'm going to talk about this one next. They're, they're not only are they you know, typically a little worse because they evaporate really fast, they're also absorbed through your healthy skin. So just these two. So another sort of issue to be aware of. Now the citrus peel D-Lemonine, which are really one and the same, uh, one product, uh, one sort of ingredient of the other. And you know, sometimes it's labeled as a green product. And you've really got to be careful when someone says that because it can be really green for the environment, but not green for people. And that's really the case with this particular product right here. Now, those, those particular ingredients, the citrus peel D-Lemonine, are actually labeled as EPA-registered pesticides. And it's been known to cause liver and kidney damage. So again, you know, just want to have you have, have you have that awareness of this particular product right here. Now, as far as healthier alternatives, certainly the odorless mineral spirits are a lot better. Um, particularly Gamsol, which I really like. It is, has a high PEL rating. It has a low evaporation rate. Most of the toxic aromatic hydrocarbons have been removed. And it's actually a very good medium as well. So definitely something I'd steer towards uh, as far as a healthier alternative. Now, hopefully that gave you a a little bit better understanding of some of the issues that we face when, when using solvents. Now next, I did want to talk about pallets. Now, we used to, everyone used to seem to use wooden pallets, but there's, there's glass pallets out there now, there's plastic pallets, there are disposable pallets, all sorts of different pallets to choose from out there. And we're going to take a look at that in our next segment. So let's take a look at that next.